Page 30, Sloop John B. On pages 26 through 29, whatever, they got various things going on. I don't really cover that so much in itself. I talk about the kind of stuff when I'm talking about the pieces. So on 26, they're giving you the melody for Brahms Lullaby, a very famous melody. And they want you to play block chords or whatever with the melody. So it's like they're here. They want you to play a C chord with it. Somewhere. Don't care where. Just play a C chord. And I'd play a C chord with each measure then. Play them like whole notes. And then a G7 chord. So forth, you can do that. And they got pedal and all that. Have fun with that. Page 27, a little bit of theory about chords. Every, let's go back to a scale. C scale. Any scale will do. Well, you see, because it's the white keys here. Every note in a scale has a name, as well as a number. I mean, it's a number. One, two, three, they're numbered, but they have a name too. And the first one, the note, is the root. It's like the bottom note. It's the root. It's the root of the scale. Well, when you have a chord, any chord, and it's, it's every other note, and the bottom note tells you the name of the chord, and here we have a G chord. Well, that bottom note of the chord is also called a root. Root is simply the bottom note of the scale. So if I have a, a C scale, that's the root. If I have the four, four chord or an F scale, well, the root is the F. It's the name of the chord. It's the F. Here, and a, a five seven chord or a G seven chord here. Well, the root of that chord is the G. Because if I turn it around and tell it's every other note, so it's arranged, so it's every other note here. Well, it'd be a put the B up top. It has there's a D in the chord, by the way, and then the F here. When I do that, I'm here. Now it's every other note. The bottom note identifies the chord, it's a G. But when I talk about a C chord or an F chord, the name of that name, the C or the F, is also the root of the chord. Just be aware of it. It comes in handy if somebody's talking about it, you understand what they're talking about. Hmm. Then some broken chord accompaniments you might think about for even anything, if you want to improvise, this is one of the issues, rather than playing block chords, on the Brahms Lullaby, you can play the broken chords. Or so. For three, four time, it comes in handy if it's a quarter note and a half note, because that, that's three beats. If it were four, four time, you could do them all quarter notes. So the Brahms Lullaby with that. fourth and that's things you can think about. Then on page 28 they're introducing you to the F major scale. The F major scale has one flat. The key of F major has one flat, a B flat. All the B's are flatted. So if you have it this is the time for you to go to my scale video on F major. If you don't know the scale learn it one octave up and down. Get accustomed to playing it. If you already know the scale then start doing it two octaves up and down. But don't start immediately two octaves up and down if you don't know the scale because it gets confusing. Well, just, just take it one step at a time. The right hand fingering in an F major scale isn't the same as C major and G major and the, um, any of the other scales actually it's, it's completely different. So you just gotta, the left hand's the same fingering but the right hand's different because of the black key. It's, it's in the way. It's here. So I want thumb next. I can't because it's a black key. I don't want to do that. So I've got to use fourth finger on the black key. And then thumb, thumb comes under for the C. Here. Well, when I was young, up all the way through till I got into college and learned to play scales correctly, I really couldn't play an F major scale because of that. I could not do that. But if you'll do the exercises, the the technique I, I explain in the scale video, this will go a long way toward teaching you to, to play that evenly. You, 
you, you learn to play it smoothly and evenly eventually. It's a struggle at first. Take your time with it. But you'll get it eventually. In a few years, whatever, I don't know. Then that brings us up to Sloop John B. 4-4 four, four time, we're in the key of F major, so all the B's are flatted. There's one flat in the key signature. Eighth notes all over the place, and you can tell by this weird looking rhythm. We got syncopation going on, so let's work this out one hand at a time first. Make sure we got the notes and the fingering and all that junk. At the top of the page, they're introducing you to a thing called a phrase. I want to come back to that a little later. So let's talk about Sloop John first. Right hand, you have a quarter rest, and it's one and two and, and that A is tied. So you're going to hold it. It would be like it were a quarter note. We've had that before. One and two and three and four and one and two. And if it really is confusing you here with all these notes, then take out that little tie temporarily and play all those eighth notes. One and two and three and four and one and. Then it's not quite so bad. But once you get a handle on that, then put the tie back in. You simply hang on to the note rather than playing it again. One and two and three and four and one and. Oh, all right. So that for the most part is the rhythm throughout. Let's go down to major five. It's notes are different. One and it's G sharp. Don't forget the B flat. So again, one and two and three and four and one and two and three. And that's tied. Hang on to it forever or until the next measure. And you do that smart. Overall me measure 11. You're ending it here. And you have a one beat rest to go on. You simply move down to this position. One and two and three and four and. And finally we get a rhythm that makes sense. Well, isn't that nice? And going on, during the rest, you move up. One and. and F and B flat together. Here. That's fine. Going on, measure 16 is one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and then three. So measure 18 is one and two and three. I talked about this using different fingers on these notes before, and this is a good example here. Last measure down there, that mess, that is a G and an A and a C, except you have an 8 VA above it with that dotted line, so the last two measures, rather than here, you're up here. One and two and three and four, and then here. And just use the fingers that are already on the keys, that's fine. Try and get them down at the same time. I can't, but maybe you can. Left hand at the beginning. One and two, and you're done. Huh? One and two, and oh, isn't this fun? Second line, measure four at the end. There's four and four and one and two and three and. Now, I suggest you try this. Starting with measure five. Try using a five and two. Unless you have real little hands. Use five, use two on that. So you're saving thumb for the D. And each time you're doing this throughout, use two and one on the D and the C. It's good practice to use the thumb. You learn to feel that, and you need to be able to do it without looking at the keyboard eventually. But most of the time in pieces, when you get this kind of a pattern, you're going to use second finger on that one note. takes us over to measure 10 at the top. It's one and two and three. Same rhythm as the right hand and then one and two and don't forget the B flat. One and two and then you got rest and you come down here. One and two and bring the thumb up and then measure 15 during the rest you come up. One and two bottom last measure, that last note, that's an F down here. All right, big deal. Put the hands together. One and two and three and four and. It sounds a little different when you put the hands together, huh? 
Yeah. It's just too tempting to, well, to play it for me, let me hear it. And I would play that. And you say, oh, okay, I got it. No, because you didn't read the music. It, you don't got it if you can't actually read the music and figure it out yourself, as far as I'm concerned. And that's sort of what that is. Let's go down to measure five. Well, actually, it's the pickup to measure five. One beat. One and two and three and four and one and two. By the way, that's a G natural there, because that sharp in the previous measure is only good for that measure. I usually miss those and play the wrong note. I may have already, who knows. And the rhythms at whatever speed you got to go to get it. Eventually you got to get the glitches and the hesitations worked out so the beat is steady. You can go real slow, it's all right, but no hesitations. Then we can add the articulation. Well articulation, let's go back and talk about this at the top, this phrasing, because that's part of articulation. A phrase is indicated sometimes by that big curved line, like a slur, Sometimes a phrase isn't indicated at all. You, you, you hear it. You can hear, usually hear a musical sentence. See, we talk in sentences. Well, music a lot of times is played in sentences. Most of the time it's played in sentences. And you can hear these sentences. They're phrases. Generally, it's, we lift up a little silence between the phrases, like taking a breath or so forth. And the technique on piano is the same as slurs, you simply lift up. It's a very gentle motion, big deal, it's just a, just a little bit, not a lot. So here, your phrase starts to pick up to measure five. You see the curved line? Now here they're using the curved line to mark the phrases for you. That helps a little. If they didn't have them, you can usually follow the words. And you follow the sentences or the commas or semicolons or whatever in the words. And that can tell you where the phrases are also. I'll give you a hint. It doesn't always line up, but many times it does. But we're starting here at connect it. That ends it. And then you lift up. It's like taking a breath in the right hand. The left hand, play it as connected as you can. Lift up. So of course you're going to lift up. See, it's one of these. It's sort of a sentence, and it can be a long sentence or a short sentence or whatever, but that, that's the idea with phrasing. So we add in these phrasing, or the slurs, the connecting, the lifting up, and all that fun stuff. I don't see any staccatos or accents or any of that, so that's fine. Then we do the dynamics. Moderately soft at the beginning. It's This is introduction, and it's both hands. It's... it's it's kind of sound like one hand played the whole thing. And, and moderately soft. Whatever you think sort of soft is. And second measure come up to sort of loud, just a little bit. Third measure go back down to moderately soft. And then the melody is moderately loud, everything else is soft. The last note in measure four is melody got a word with it, it's got to be melody. And then the melody goes to the right hand. So it sounds... So the left hand has to be so, less and then soft. Can you do that? This, Keep these soft too. 
and then measure 14, you get it, go up to loud. Now you're loud, so it's here. The left hand can come up a little bit to about moderately soft, but keep it down. And then measure 18, go down to moderately soft, soft, moderately soft. The left hand soft. Measure 20, it's both hands are the same. It's like it was at the beginning, the intro. This is like a coda. Actually, it is a coda. They just didn't label it as a coda. See, it doesn't have to be labeled as a coda. It's still a coda. The point is, the first three measures or so at the beginning, four measures, are introduction. The song doesn't start until the pickup to measure five. That's the song. And then on, on page 31, the song ends with the whole note on measure 19. The song's over right there. You could have quit right there. Whatever. You could have stopped there. But this other little tag at the end is a coda. And it's just... And it's moderately soft. Go up to moderately loud. Slow down. Go down soft. And slow down. No? That's just an afterthought. It's important to recognize these things because when it comes to interpreting the music, you need to understand is this introduction, is this coda, is this part of the piece, because it can affect how you interpret the music, how you feel it. This is something that takes some time to get, so I'm just kind of spewing it at you now, but we'll spew it at you a lot more as time goes on. Just keep it in mind. And the speed, a bright rock. Moderately bright? Is it moderately bright rock? Okay. I, I don't feel moderately bright or rocky today, but it's okay. If you were going to sing it, how fast? Ba -da -ba. However fast you sing it, it's close enough. I'm not going to sing it, but you can sing it if you want. I don't care. I can't hear you. So you just play the whole thing at that speed until the end when you slow down. Doesn't tell you how much to slow down, but it's a felt. You feel, how much do you feel like slowing down? Well, a little or a lot, whatever. Then they've added pedal. All right, let's talk pedal. Again, they're keeping the pedal simple for you. Why are we pedaling? Well, overtones mainly here. Just push the note down and then the pedal. I'm gonna blur all this together. suggest you lift the pedal up with a dotted half note so we hear a little silence so it's like phrase before we go on okay that causes a problem because we can't connect this to this because I need to play this note again and I, so, I can, so there's a little silence I don't want silence there I want it connected so I'm gonna lift the pedal up with here but I'm gonna push it down again with that quarter note here so I can connect it to this and then I'm going to lift it up right after I play that. So it's just down for one beat or so. And that's another reason we pedal. Sometimes we pedal to help us connect the notes that we cannot connect with the hands and this is one of those things. I want to connect that. I can't. So I'm going to use the pedal to do it. But I'm going to lift the pedal immediately because I don't want to pedal this. That smears it. I don't want to do that. We smeared it in the introduction, so I don't know why not, but we don't, okay. So there, measure four, you're here. Just lift it up with the hands. And for some reason, they want this pedaled. understand why but they do and then the coda at the end that tag they want all that pedal it makes sense if you pedal at the beginning so they sound the same sort of so if you chose not to pedal at the beginning then don't pedal at the end either I don't care for the pedal at the beginning if I'm gonna pedal it maybe I'll just pedal the first two beats and I catch all these notes I can catch those that's a chord and then lift it up right after. And then 
pedal up. And, and I wouldn't pedal measure six at all. I don't understand why they want measure six pedaled or measure eight pedaled. I don't think you should pedal those. Ugh. You have to listen to the sound the pedal is making, the effect it's making. Is that really the sound you want? Listen very carefully to it. to play this with you very slowly to check the notes and the rhythms. I'm going to leave out the pedal. You can do the pedaling if you want to. I can hear it better without the pedal and I need you to hear the notes. So I'll give us four counts and let's do it together. One, two, ready and go and. One and two and three and four and. Two, three, four, 